Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal, just in case you're new here. And today I have a horror book haul for you guys. my shirt every day is Halloween to me I love Halloween guys um, and I read horror all year long I do run a book club called horror in 24 which I run with a bunch of my friends over on discord and on Instagram so make sure you follow our Instagram down below links to that book club are in the description bar with all the information that you need for the book club but this month coming up for June, we are reading Paradise Club, which is by Tim Meyer, and I'm so excited to be reading this. This is about like a vacation where murder and mayhem and crazy stuff starts happening. Um, it sounds like the perfect vacation until mass murderers start murdering people and then the people themselves that are there on vacation have to become murderers to survive that's the way I kind of like put the synopsis together um so I'm excited to read it with you guys we will be having a live show at the end of the month about that and then in July we are going to be reading The Elementals by Michael McDowell which is an older book but a goodie the idea of this book club is to read indie authors way backlisted authors. Horror of today, all of the new stuff, whatever it is, we want to indulge ourselves in the horror genre um, and not leave anybody out, if you know what I mean. The indie horror world is huge and there's so many amazing authors out there that everyone should check out. So the idea of this book club is every other month or so we're going to feature an indie author as our book club pick. So if you are an indie horror writer make sure that you leave a comment down below or you can even send me an email and let me know about your book. So now that I got a little off track already in the beginning of the video, shocking right? So for July we are reading The Elementals by Michael McDowell and we are having a guest host for that book and that is Cameron Chaney from the channel Cameron Chaney. I am so overly jealous of his book hauls and his book collection. His library is freaking amazing and not for nothing his book recommendations have been something that I've been going to for years. So I'm so excited to have Cameron a part of the Horror in 24 book club for the month of July. So make sure if you are interested in joining with talking with Cameron a little bit about the elementals, make sure you're joining our discord group and joining our Instagram page for more information. And for the month of August, we are reading Joyland by Stephen King, which is really exciting for me. I love Stephen King. Obviously, you guys know that. You've been watching my channel for a while. So if you too also love Stephen King, make sure that you read along with us for Joyland because I feel like a book about like a crazy like fun house carnival kind of thing is perfect for the summer, especially the end of summer, right guys? Our in 24's summer TBR is booked up for June, July, and August. So make sure you check out our Instagram again for more information on the book club. If you are new to the horror genre if or if you are someone who has been reading horror like us for a really long time, make sure you join us. It's going to be a blast. I love reading with you guys. It's so much fun. But let's get into the book haul because I bought a lot of books this month. I picked up so much horror books because I needed to just kind of filter in my collection again, if you know what I mean. So in no particular order here, I'm just gonna go off the top of this large stack that I have in front of me. First book that I have here is Goddess of Filth and this is by V. Castro. This book sounds freaking amazing. It is kind of like a the craft meets like the I don't even know like like Jennifer's body maybe like 
totally, totally right up my alley. It's about a group of friends that do like a seance and one of the friends gets possessed by whatever happened in the story. It's a, it's a short one. I don't want to know too much about it, but I've heard nothing but great things so far about this book. Um, if you've read this book, let me know. And I love the spine because check it out. It's a spine. It's an actual spine. Can you see it? Is it focusing? How freaking dope is that? Come on. So I'm excited to read this. I'll probably pick this up very, very soon. The next book I picked up is The Remaking, and this is by Clay McLeod, McLeod Chaplin, a Goodreads finalist. It says here, These Woods Whisper. I've heard mixed things about this book, but it is about like a witch and a cemetery and things like that. So hello that's all the things that i love so why not pick it up right so i picked it up on my trip to barnes and noble last week uh on a whim and apparently this is like based on a true story or a true crime story that um actually did happen or something so really really picked my interest and i can't wait to get into this up i have this really awesome cover and that is ghost story by peter schwab this is <laughs> Peter Schwab. Peter Straub? I've never read anything from Peter Straub before. I know he co-wrote The Talisman with Stephen King, so I've been wanting to pick this up for a long time. Uh, I actually had purchased it and then unhauled it because I never got to it. And then it just started coming back onto my Instagram feed. I've been seeing a lot more people reading it. So I went and picked myself up a new copy because why not right so i'm hoping to get to this this summer i want to say this is about like a group of friends older guys who did something when they were younger and then they go on a trip into like the woods or the wilderness or something and every their story just like everything comes back to haunt them i i kind of get like it vibes but not not really but like a little bit i don't really know but if you've read this let me know if you enjoyed it i've also have heard mixed things about it i've also heard that it's quite slow in the beginning so i don't really know but i will be getting to it this summer this is part of my summer tbr the next i picked up this really freaking awesome book and that is Goblin by Josh Mellerman. I cannot wait to read the stories in this book. Is this not the coolest cover you've ever seen in a book? Like, what? Right up there with Greedy Hendrix's My Best Friend's Exorcism, I think for me, this is just gorgeous and I'm going to be displaying it. I hope the stories inside are just as good as the cover. I wanna say that this is, um, a bunch of short stories about like a town named Goblin. I thought it was a story about Goblin, short stories about Goblins, which I would have been really cool with because how many short story compilations are about Goblins. But this is like a small town named Goblin. So there's definitely some eerie, spooky stories in here. And I love myself a good short story collection sometimes. Sometimes you just don't want to get into a whole big novel. You know what I mean? You want to kind of fly through some short stories. And I've never read a short story collection where every single story is amazing. I still have yet to find that perfect short story collection. But this one seems like it may, may make that number one spot on my list of short stories. We shall see. Let me know if you've read this one as well. Then next I picked up Thinner by Stephen King because I don't own a copy of this and I've been wanting to get to this. I've heard mixed things about this as well, but um, this is, I want to say it's like about a guy who just keeps getting thinner and thinner, which is really freaky to me. I don't know why that like kind of really triggers me and freaks me out so this sounds like it's going to be a really scary book for me to get to um i'm terrified to pick this up this was also a book that he wrote as richard bachman so this originally was not a stephen king story and people did not know stephen king wrote it during the time that it was published so this is whatever stephen king writes by richard bachman it's a little bit more of his adventurous typewriting uh, more experimental for him kind of stepping out of his box and seeing how well he does 
So I definitely heard like mixed things about this. A lot of people say that they feel that it should have been more of a short story than a novel in itself, which I feel like it's a short novel for Stephen King. So we shall see when I get into it, but let me know your thoughts on Thinner, but no spoilers, please guys. I picked up her Dark Lies by JT Ellison. This is a thriller about um, a girl and her fiance. I believe they go on their honeymoon or something like that. And then while on their honeymoon, she runs into a guy that she had an affair with and like things start to happen. Um, and yeah, it's kind of kind of reminds me a little bit of The Guest List by Lucy Foley a little bit, just the vibe. Um, but I really like the premise of like being on vacation. It's very like gothic storytelling to me and JT Ellison writes really great mystery thrillers. I read Bad Girls Lie by JT Ellison in one sitting. I think I actually called out of work the day that I read it because I couldn't put it down. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I took a sick day to finish reading that book. It was really great. It was very engrossing. So I'm looking forward to reading more from JT Ellison. And this is one of her newest releases. This just recently was published. So I'm looking forward to it. The next I picked up Taryn Fisher's The Wrong Family. Tara Fisher, I feel like either you love her or you hate her. I love her writing. I love her Instagram. I love everything about this woman. She is, she gets down to the nitty gritty with things. She is a dark mystery thriller author. Um, she could even do like some romance, but it's like dark. Like everything she writes is dark and gritty and a lot of her murder scenes are pretty graphic. So if you're someone who loves that kind of stuff, if you like a little bit more grit to your thrillers, mystery thrillers, um, definitely check her writing out. This is her most recent release. Um, this too has her, you know, I've heard mixed things. I, I bought a lot of polarizing books this time around because I want to make my own decisions on things. I'm tired of judging books by people, other people's readings. I need to get in there and make my own. But this is, I don't really know what this is about, honestly. Um, I want to, is this about like, yeah, of course there's marriage in here. So it's a little bit more of an older adult type thriller. It says Juno was wrong about Winnie Crouch before moving in with the Crouch family. Juno thought Winnie and her husband, Nigel, had the perfect marriage, the perfect son, the perfect life. Only now that she's living in their beautiful house, she sees the cracks in the crumbling facade are too deep to ignore. Still, she isn't one to judge after her grim diagnosis. The retired therapist simply wants a place to live out the rest of her days in peace, but that peace is shattered the day Juno overhears a chilling conversation between Winnie and Nigel. She shouldn't get involved, she really shouldn't, but this could be her chance to make a few things right because if you thought Juno, Juno doesn't have a secret of her own, then you were wrong about her too. Very vague still have no idea what this is about but pick it up it's a really cool cover it looks nice on the bookshelves and Taryn Fisher is just chef's kiss an amazing author next up I have here The Whispering House and this is by Elizabeth Brooks this just caught my eye off the cover I was like oh this is a cool cover this looks like a haunted house book right right well it is a haunted house book. This is a gothic telling of a ghost story. It says Freya Lael is struggling to move on from her sister Stella's death five years ago, visiting the bewitching Burn Hall, only a few miles from the scene of the tragedy. She discovers a portrait of Stella, a portrait she had no idea existed in a house Stella never set foot in, or so she thought. Driven to find out more about her sister's secrets, Freya is drawn into the world of Burn Hall and its owners, charismatic artist Corey and his sinister watchful mother but as Freya lingers in this mysterious centuries old house her her relationship with Corey crosses the line into obsession and the darkness behind the locked doors of the estate threatens to spill out in prose as lush and atmospheric as Burn Hall itself Elizabeth Brooks weaves a simmering propulsive tale of art sisterhood and all-consuming love the ways it can lead us towards tenderness nostalgia and longing as well as shocking acts of violence Sounds great. I don't know if it's technically hard. It, it was in the horror section, so I'm sure there are some spooky parts of this book. 
Then next I picked up The Beautiful Ones, and this is by Silvia Moreno Garcia, who I love, who wrote Mexican Gothic. I love her books so much, so I was really excited to see that this was a Barnes & Noble book club pick where I can buy one and get one 50% off, whatever the case is. It's a good deal, guys. It's a great deal. So I picked this up. I want to say this is about a witch of some sort, and yeah. That's all I know. Next, I picked up Stephen King's Eyes of the Dragon, which I don't know if this is more so a fantasy book than a horror book, but it is written by the king of horror himself. So I'm looking forward to getting to this. This is a like YA book, and my friend Carol said that Stephen King wrote Eyes of the Dragon for his daughter at the time um, when she was a young adult teenager. So I thought that was a really cool fun fact about this book. And while on vacation, I picked up this book from a little bookshop. Um, it's called The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I did not own this book. This is one of the biggest classic, well, it's not a big classic, but it's a very well-known classic in the horror genre. It's haunting, but I thought this cover was really cool. It's just really spooky, gothic-looking cover, and I wanted to help out an indie bookstore so i picked this up on my trip um to new hope pennsylvania there are so many beautiful bookstores and vintage shops in the area if you live in pennsylvania or you live near pennsylvania definitely check it out it's so cool next i have here a house at the bottom of a lake by josh mallerman second josh mallerman in this haul i don't really buy his books i guess but this time i did I've heard nothing but great things about this story. It's a short one, but it's a really good one. It's technically a novella, um, but it's about a group of people, well, a group of people, uh, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and they're like on vacation of some sort, and they end up going to this house at the bottom of a lake, and it, they don't know how it got there or what's going on, and it's really creepy, apparently. Anything that's underwater, too, is really scary for me because I'm afraid of the ocean, and I absolutely hate it. It spooks me out. I think I might may have drowned on the Titanic at one point in my past life because I just hate the ocean so much. So this might spook me out a lot. But it's not an ocean. It's a lake. It's a body of water. But bodies of water just freak me out. You know what I mean? So this sounds like the perfect horror novella, novella for me, and maybe I will overcome some fears by reading this book, you know? Then I picked up Burn Town by Jennifer McMahon because I love her books. This will be like my fourth or fifth book by her. Um, this is one of her first books ever written. It's about like a place in New England, I want to say, and it's like murder mystery type spooky book like all of her books are. I just really love her as an author. I read The Drowning Kind recently and absolutely fell in love with it. Definitely check it out if you want something that will haunt you. It's so scary. <laughs> well, I don't want to say it's so scary, but it's very haunting. And it's like the perfect horror slash like thriller type book to read. I, I read it in like two settings. It was great. Next I have here The Rust Maidens by Gwendolyn Keist. Keist? Kist? I have been meaning to pick this up for a very long time. If you're friends with me, you know I've been saying it, that I've been going to read it, and I just, I haven't picked it up yet. So I finally ordered it myself a physical copy on Amazon to give this indie author some love because I've heard nothing but amazing things about her books. And I listened recently to, I think it was Ladies of the Fright she was on podcast. And just talking about her writing and certain types of characters and horror stories and the horror genre. So I really enjoyed listening to her speak on that subject. So I really wanted to read more from her because of that. And then next I picked up The Elementals by Michael McDowell, which is our July book club pick for the Horror in 24 book club. Um, definitely join us if you can. I'm so excited. And then I have here two first edition books of Stephen King's that I picked up recently. Gerald's Game, which I got in New Hope, actually. It was really a funny story. I'll be short with this. But I was in um, Lahaska, Lahaska Bookshop in Peddler's Village. 
and I was looking around and I didn't really see like much to, like used Stephen King. They had like a used book section, but they didn't really have much there. It was a lot of James Patterson books. Um, so, and like Brad Thor books and things like that. So I went to Ring Up. I actually bought Eyes of the Dragon there because anytime I visit an indie bookshop, I have to purchase something just to give back to the community and to small businesses. It's just so important to do that. So I was just chatting with the girl behind the desk a little bit and I was like, do you happen to have any like or get any first editions of Stephen King here? And this guy who was like doing like the racking for books, he just like pulled this out from behind, <laughs> behind the counter and was like, yeah, here you go. Someone actually dropped this off today. They apparently have someone who sells first editions to them there that just like drops them off. So the person left like a little, a little teeny tiny note inside this book and it says if you watched on netflix you know how creepy this book is but you need to read the book to understand the sex this is a 1992 first edition i'm keeping that in there forever because i think that is the cutest thing and it's the cutest handwriting i've ever seen but this is a really great first edition it's an amazing shape and I'm so happy that I got it. And what are the odds, guys? Like, it was totally meant to be. So, I will cherish this forever. I picked up Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. This is my first edition of it. And it's definitely, like, a well-loved first edition. I mean, this is an old book, guys. Like, this is old. But it's so pretty. And I'm so happy. And it's really in better shape than most that I've seen. So, I got really lucky with this one. So yeah, I'm really excited. Finally, since we're at the end of this video, so if you're at the end of my video, you get a little surprise here. Um, I am, I recently got in the mail this beautiful arc of My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, which is a very highly, highly, highly anticipated book for me for this year. And it is the coolest packaging. Um, they put it in like this VHS type sleeve, which is so cool. It says my heart is a chainsaw on the side. So it looks like a, like a video. So if you're not old enough what, to know what a VHS is, I, I just don't know what to say to you, but this is how I used to watch movies. Remember, remember guys, <laughs> that sound. But yeah, I'm so excited. And if you can see in the back here, it's a little glary, I'm sorry. But there's Stephen Graham Jones. There's like, you know, the people that are part of the production. You know what I mean? This is definitely very Greedy Hendrix, my best friend's exorcism type style book, which I really love that they're doing more of these. Um, yeah, so this is by Saga Press. So let's check out our beautiful physical arc of my heart is a chainsaw and here we go i got this a couple days ago and refused to open it until now because i wanted to do it for you guys uh so excited for this let me know if you two are really excited for this book it says in the back here this book actually comes out what is the really it's august i want to say it's out august 31st of this year so make sure you mark on your goodreads or on your calendars for the release day of this book because it's going to be Huge. Back here, Jade feels as if she's trapped in the opening scenes of a slasher film. When tourists go missing, intentions rise between her community and the celebrity newcomers to the Indian Lake shore. As a conglomerate known as the Founders begins breaking ground for their rustic mansions in what they're unironically calling Terra Nova, Jade watches as the small town she knows and hates moves towards catastrophe. This summer, as yachts compete with canoes on Indian Lake, Jade is convinced a killer will rise. This just is so reminiscent of my childhood, of all the things I love about the horror genre and what made me a huge fan of the horror genre in the 90s and in the 80s. Slasher films were everything to my generation, personally. I think a lot of us from that are millennials were very nostalgic about how we were brought up, especially by what we watched on TV and we, what we watched as movies and read as books. We just love that spooky content. 
Uh, so yeah, this sounds freaking amazing and I'll probably pick it up very soon and let you guys know my thoughts on it. Also in the package, I got some postcards here, which are so cool. And let's rip them open. So like 1965 never stopped happening, Proof Rock, Idaho. So I'm assuming that these have something to do with the story. Obviously I haven't read it yet. And then this one says Terra Nova, New Frontier, which is the town that Jade lives in. And then what does this say? I survived Camp Blood. Ooh, very curious about that. And then I have a room key here, which I'll take out of the plastic. That's how new it is, right? Camp Blood room key number six so i wonder what number six has to do with anything and then this is just perfect for me because i collect horror pins in case you didn't know and this is a chainsaw with a heart on it can't go wrong but that is that upside down it is my heart is a chainsaw pin which is going to go on my horror themed backpack here um this is my backpack that i take pretty much everywhere that is it for my horror book haul thank you guys for watching i hope it's not too long i feel like i've been talking forever but if you guys have any recommendations for me please leave it in the comments down below and make sure that you are following horror in 24 our book club it consists of marcy from marcy reads rain from bruise and binds carol from carol marie reads and mandy from mandy morgue of horror on youtube so i will leave all their channels linked down below so you could follow them all and check out what they are about but on that note guys if you want to see more book hauls from me i know i did a book haul back to back but i couldn't help myself uh just make sure you like and subscribe down below and i'll be talking to you guys in my next video bye